David Ben Gurion speaking in Jerusalem. Good evening. This is Unu in Hong Kong. Now, here is Edward R. Murrow. Good evening. Tonight's small world unites two statesmen and scholars who are also old friends. From Jerusalem, Prime Minister David Ben Gurion. And from Burma, we are picking him up from Hong Kong, former Prime Minister Unu of Burma. Prime Minister Ben Gurion, there's an open circuit to Hong Kong if you would like to say shalom. Shalom, Mr. Unu. Shalom, Mr. Ben Gurion. Oh, you hear me? Yes. How are you? Yes, thank you. I'm quite, quite well. How is your wife? Is she with you? Oh, thank you very much. She's fine too. How is Mrs. Ben Gurion? Oh, fine. Hey, she remembers you. We all remember you. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, I visited your country in 1935. I remember still that I was taken to a site uh, which your government proposed to turn into a garden. At that Did time, it was... Proposed to what? Uh, at that time, the government proposed to turn it into a garden. It was only full of rocks. No, not even art. Uh, they promised that if I come back again to Israel after three years, it will be turned into a garden. Has yes. it been turned into a garden? Well, not as fully as I expected. You see, we always wish and hope for more than we human beings can accomplish. Yes. But it's being turned into a garden, and I wish you to come again and to see the trees where there was never a tree since the creation. And green patches, and horses breeding, and sheep. And young girls and young children are living there. I have heard the Prime Minister say that in Israel, in order to be a realist, one must believe in miracles. Is that true in Burma, Uno? Not yet quite. Uh, in Israel, there are plenty of men who can do wonders, who can do miracles. And I have seen some of the things, some of the miraculous things they have done themselves. Because they have turned deserts into gardens. They have turned the rocks into... I mean, oasis and things like that. So, to me, when, when the Israelis said that they would do certain things, I believe. Uh, Prime Minister Ben-Gurion, did you know that our friend Uno once translated Dale Carnegie into Burmese? I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm afraid not. Well, sir, uh, he was a proficient salesman and teacher of public speaking. And a he salesman? I was never a salesman, see? <laughs> The man who wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People. What? This is one of the most popular books in the whole world. It cannot be done by books. It can be done only by heart. One cannot learn that. You must have it in his soul. Who knew translated that book, you know? <laughs> Into Burmese? Into Burmese, yes. I see. And did you make many friends with it? Yes, it is still very popular in our country. Well, in How to... Win friends and influence people by Carnegie and Uno. It is stated that the sweetest word in any man's language is his own name. And yet, Uno, in a recent speech, you said that part of the world's troubles and ills came from the repeated use of the word I. According to Buddhism, uh, this is the, the very source of all the troubles. So if we want to get rid of all these troubles, first of all, we must get rid of this I, I consciousness which is called, which is called in, in, in Buddhism, Sekaya Deity. Well, Uno, what do you think we should do in order to get rid of this I consciousness? Meditate. Meditation is the only way by which we can get rid of that I. That's why when I visited Israel a few years ago, I had invited the Prime Minister to come over to Rangoon and have a little bit of meditation. He has accepted it. Med but meditation, my dear Uno, is not enough. Meditation is merely a personal thing. Every one of us must do something for the world, for humanity. And this cannot be done by meditation alone. I quite agree. But if you want to get rid of that I, the source of all troubles, we must do it. It is the only way. The I is not so bad in itself. The question is whether it's a selfish I or a human eye. The same. It is the same. You see, our God began his ten commandments with the word I. I am your God. Oh, I see. I don't know about that. 
There is no such thing as God in Buddhism. Well, except for this basic difference, I believe Prime Minister Ben-Gurion believes that there are great similarities between Judaism and Buddhism. For example, the Ten Commandments and the basic principles of Buddhism are roughly the same, aren't they? No, we, we have uh, not only ten principles, there are four groups of commandments for lay Buddhists and one group for the priests. In the first group, there are five commandments. In the second, eight. The third, nine. And the fourth, ten commandments. The five commandments are quite essential for all the lay Buddhists. These are, you must not kill, you must not steal, you must not commit adultery, you must not tell lies, you must not drink intoxicated liquor. It is quite essential for every lay Buddhist to observe the first group of five commandments. He cannot break any one of them. For the priests, there are 227. Uh, so I don't think you will be very much interested in listening to uh, the 227 commandments or rules of Dinia for the priests. Prime Minister Ben-Gurion, you spoke at length about Judaism and Buddhism, and you pointed out the similarities between the two. But I have the feeling that Unu does not entirely agree with you. It is uh, similar and different. It's similar in that respect that Buddhism wants people to live in peace, love each other, help each other, and to draw away hatred. Yes. The best saying of the Buddha, as far as I know, in the Dhammapada, where he says that enmity doesn't cease by enmity, yes. Yes. only by law. And this is almost the same what he said in our Torah, that you should love your fellow men like yourself. That is the similarity. But there is also a difference. There is a great deal of pessimism in Buddhism. The Buddha said that life is suffering and misery and pain no, no, I, and I, sorrow. I, I, While it is true uh, that there no, is no, misery no, and I, suffering in life, but we believe there is also joy and creativeness in life and not merely misery. That is the difference. Buddhism is not pessimistic, it is optimistic. We put special emphasis not on suffering, but getting out of the suffering. That is on, 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 I mean, that is the thing on which we put special emphasis. Well, gentlemen, there are certain similarities in your careers, at least to the extent that both of you, at the height of your political power, voluntarily stepped down. Ben-Gurion to go to the desert and raise sheep, and Unu to go to a monastery and contemplate. How could you afford to do that, and how could your countries afford to let you do it? I did step out in 1956. Uh, say you can say it is mainly for contemplation. At that time, my people didn't want me to go, but I've got to go because uh, I'm replying to the inner arch. And when the people understood that I did so as a, in, in response to the inner arch, uh, they were not in my way. They simply let me go. What I came originally to do in this country, what the our belief is, that a people must live on its own way. And a people can rebuild its country in its own only by its own hard work. And to go to work, especially on the land, was the idea which brought me some 53 years ago to this country. And I was sorry that I had to give it up for public activity. In the first opportunity which I had seen, that I can safely leave government in the hands of my friends, I went back to do the things which I love to do, and I'm happy that I did it. And I hope I will be able to do it again next year or sometime, either when I will leave or they will throw me out of the government, because it's bound to come sometimes. Uh, I had never wanted to be in the government service. 
Uh, that's why it is very easy for me to step out. But I had to step into the government because our late leader, Bojuk Aung San, was assassinated. And all my friends wanted me to get in. And I got in only after I got the promise from them that I would be allowed to get out after six months. But unfortunately, after three months, we had general insurrection in Burma, so I couldn't get out. Have you ever worried about the possibility of assassination? I don't. Because, according to Buddhism, if I have ill luck, and if I don't do anything about it, nothing on earth can prevent me from being assassinated. But Buddhism being an optimistic religion teaches us how to combat that ill luck. And if I can sufficiently do something to combat that ill luck, there will be nothing on earth that can assassinate me. Prime Minister ben Goyen, has it ever bothered you? No, never. All this may happen, anything may happen, but this but country is an exception, you know, of the Middle East. There, here we can change the government by very peaceful means. Well, perhaps the election you're about to have in Israel will serve as an example for the rest of the Middle East. Prime Minister ben Gurion, I can tell that you're enjoying talking with UNO over this great distance. With whom else would you like to talk on a program of this kind? Later on, with any decent fellow. With any decent, decent fellow? Yes, who cares for peace and for the welfare of the humanity. Would you be willing to have this type of conversation with uh, Nasser, for example? Well, you must ask him first. Because I would do it. If he was re ready to talk peace, then yes. Who knew? Yes. If we should arrange a conversation between Prime Minister ben Gurion and President Nasser, would you be willing to sit in my place as the moderator? Moderator? <laughs> yes. If both of them agree, if both of them will agree, I don't mind. Well, gentlemen, we have reached the end of this conversation. Would you care to say good night to each other? Good night, Mr. Prime Minister. Good night. I hope we will see each other sometime. I should very much like to. I should very and much like to. And give my regards to your wife and on behalf of my wife, too. Yes, give my regards to Mrs. Ben-Gurion, too. Thank you very much. Yes, give, uh, my, give my salams to the, to the people of Israel, will you? And I wish your people prosperity and peace. Yes. Shalom. Shalom. Oh, shalom. Shalom. shalom, shalom. Thank you very much, and good night, and good luck. Next week's guest in just a moment.